And this is the students of Joe Satriani, and we're going to be talking about Joe Satriani again. Duh. But uh, I have featured Joe uh, several times on this channel. We've got three for all lessons, chord play episodes, there's a breaking chords, looking at some of his extended arpeggios. And I'm a huge Joe Satriani fan. I've seen him in concert a couple times. I caught one of his G3 concerts. I actually interviewed him back in 2004. So I'm a huge, you know, Satriani fan. Definitely been admiring his playing and his music since I was a teenager and I was a kid. You know, surfing with the alien, flying the blue dream, and that stuff. And for this episode, we're actually going to focus on an area of his musicianship and his career that I always found really interesting. And that's the fact that he's a teacher. You know, he's obviously a shred guitar, you know, icon. But he also is an educator. You know, he's taught lots of guitarists over the years. He's released some educational material. You know, had columns in Guitar World and Guitar for the Practice of Musician for years. And I've always found that really interesting that, yeah, he can play and shred and melt your face, but he can also teach you how to do that. And that's what this episode is going to basically focus on, you know, the educational side of Joe Satriani. So if you want to dive deep with a player like Joe Satriani, the first thing I'd recommend is go beyond his solo albums. Because really, if you start digging around, you'll notice he's collaborated and appeared on lots of albums that aren't Joe Satriani, you know, solo releases. So here's an image with some of those session appearances and guest appearances on random albums. And that includes Chickenfoot and some of the bands he's worked with, too. But check this out. And then as far as the students that Joe Satriani, you know, historically worked with, of course, Steve Vai seems to be the big name most people remember or mention. But there's a lot of other players, too. Alex Skolnick, Kirk Hammett, Charlie Hunter, Jeff Tyson. There's a ton of players. So here's an image with 10 famous players that studied with Joe Satriani. And I'm going to follow this image with a repeat of the, you know, image that goes along with this video. But I'm going to basically duplicate that image and I'm going to include the names because some of these players are very famous and some of them are a little lesser known. So I wanted to include that title image for this video with the names attached. So here's two images. As far as, you know, lessons with Joe Satriani, I've never taken a lesson from Joe, and he's worked with, you know, some famous players, but then he's worked with a lot of other players, too. I've talked to a lot of people that actually got, you know, a handful of lessons from Satriani, you know, like one or a half dozen or whatever, and I talked to him, like, what did you guys work on, and, you know, what did Joe do? And that's always fascinating. I mean, way back when I was a teenager reading guitar magazines, and I would, you know, notice Steve Vai or Kirk Hammett or whoever mentioning Joe Satriani in these lessons. And I always just wanted to be a fly on the wall. Like, what did they work on? What did they do? Was it a half hour, an hour? Or like, you know, what's a Joe Satriani guitar lesson, you know, like? And the closest you can get to it without actually taking a lesson, which I think he's actually retired from teaching now. He's still performing and still being, you know, a guitar god. But I don't think he's really doing the lesson thing as much. But if you want to get a sample or at least like a little taste or a kind of a teaser of what it might be like to study with Joe Satriani, I've mentioned this book before, but Guitar Secrets, you know, it's a collection of all of his old, you know, articles and columns from Guitar from the Practicing Musician. You know, I have a feeling that this book contains, you know, all these lessons, there's text, he's breaking down these different ideas and concepts and stuff, there's warm-ups, there's, you know, sequences and all kinds of stuff in this book. But I have a hunch that some of these ideas are probably things that he was using in private lessons, I'm guessing. But that's what it feels like. I highly recommend Guitar Secrets. All right, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to warm up. Well, we're going to use Joe Satriani warm-ups for this. And the first example here basically comes out of Guitar Secrets. I think it's actually page 21. 
and he's doing these chord based chord forms, you know, as a warm up for stretching and kind of fretting, you know, kind of getting your hands acclimated and kind of warmed up. And if you're familiar with John Petrucci's, you know, rock discipline video, he did actually demonstrate kind of a variation of this warm up. But you got to think this actually appeared in Guitar for the Practice of Musician magazine in 1988 or 1989, somewhere around there. So it's long before Petrucci's video. But I have a hunch this warm-up probably came from jazz. It could have came from classical, but it kind of reminds me of some things that you might find somebody like Joe Pass, you know, breaking down these kind of fretboard games and stuff. But this idea, um, you know, for the example that Joe demonstrated here, he's really just doing this. <laughs> fret, I mean, not really hard, but you want to push, you know, with a certain amount of pressure and just go real slow. You know, we're not worried about playing that fast. We're trying to play with control and artic articulation and just go real slow. And I'm just kind of moving, you know, my fingers. I'm not really moving my wrist a lot on my arm. I'm kind of making my fingers do most of the work. There's a little twist to the wrist. But for the most part, you're just fretting and moving like that. All right, now, when I was younger, I actually remember seeing this, uh, this lesson in a magazine. And, you know, I didn't read the text. I just saw these kind of chord diagrams or fretboard diagrams, and I played it this way. but I'm making a, a, a solid connection. You know, the fretting hand and the picking hand are working together, and I'm not going faster than where I feel like I have total control over that, like this. And I would just sit there and practice that for a while, like do it four times. anywhere. You can do it higher, you can do it lower, but the important thing there is you're going slow and making that, you know, solid connection between picking and fretting. Next up is this chromatic twilight zone exercise, and I've actually uh, read that, you know, Joe Satriani learned this from Steve Vai, so there's the student showing something to the teacher, and he actually mentioned that in the Guitar Secrets book, and this appears in the Guitar Secrets book, but I've seen Steve Vai talking about this, obviously uh, Joe Satriani, also, Kirk Hammett, I think, was in a lesson in Guitar World, and I think he said that Joe showed this to him. But I'm just going to go real slow and once again make a firm connection between my picking and fretting hand, like this. <laughs> whacked. I mean, it sounds like Twilight Zone or something, but right there, slowly, we're doing this. And then reverse the pattern. And once again, you don't want to worry about playing that fast. It's not a flashy lick or something. You're just really wanting to make a, a solid connection between your fretting and picking hand, make sure they're coordinated and working together, and just, you know, go, th go through it kind of slow, like that. Okay, next up we have some trills, or flutter power, as Joe calls it in Guitar Secrets. I think this appears around pages 17 and 18. There's actually two flutter power lessons. And I've used trills, you know, as warm-ups and exercises for years. I've used it in music, too. But we're going to put this in the same position right here. And you're going to trill using your middle and index finger between, you know, B and C, like this. You know, do it over and over and over, and then move to C and C sharp, and use your middle and third finger like this. And then 
playing C sharp and D with your third and pinky. And then move to the next string, and you're going to do that on all six strings like this. Too. I was kind of struggling there at the end, but make sure you do it on every string and you can try different positions You can move it lower, you know where you're going to stretch a little bit more between the notes Or you can move it higher where it's a little packed, you know a little tighter But that's a great warm-up and exercise just working on trills like that That flutter power exercise actually reminded me of a lesson that uh, you know Kirk Hammett had in Guitar World magazine That was back in the early 90s. I think it was called Inner Hand Man a parody of Inner Sandman obviously but in that lesson, he actually did the stretching trill exercise. But before we look at that, here's a clip with Kirk Hammett talking about taking lessons with Joe Satriani. I took lessons, lessons from him in 1980, 1981. Like that's a thing? I don't even know that that's even... Yeah, yeah we knew each other way back when. He uh, gave lessons out of, out of a, 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 a small music store in Berkeley. All my friends were taking lessons from him and they're becoming incredible guitar players literally overnight <laughs> so I found him and said hey I want to become an incredible guitar player overnight too I took lessons from him for, for a while for about a year lesson or so was, his, his lesson first lesson to me was learn your lesson don't waste your time don't waste my time I expect you to know everything that I gave you in a week's time and I was like this guy is serious but you know what I did it and you know he kicked my ass but after a while I was taking two lessons a week I, I became so thirsty for what he 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 had to offer me I was just like bring it out it's all making sense I want to learn more and, and I have to say Joe Satriani has always played that way ever since I first met him he's so here's Kirk's exercise and we're gonna basically start in the same position again and we're gonna trill between that B and C using your index and middle finger. And then I want you to stretch with your middle finger and do B to C sharp, all right? And then right there, your third finger is gonna take over and you're gonna trill B and C sharp again. And then stretch that third finger to D and stretch right there between B and D. Then your pinky's gonna take over, grab that D note again, trill right there, move to D sharp between B and D sharp. And then finally end on E right there and trill between B and E. So slowly, it's like this. You know, something like that. And you can decide how many times you want to repeat it. I was trying to keep it even as far as, you know, the number of times I repeated each one. And once you have that basic idea under your belt, you want to do it on all six strings like this. And it's very demanding. <laughs> player definitely rose to popularity with testament and also you know a jazz trio he's worked with and stuff you know a multifaceted player but definitely you know alex studied with joe back in the day and here's a clip with alex talking about you know studying with joe satriani studied 
guitar with um, a guy in my neighborhood that was said to be the, you know, the best in town. And uh, he would later go on to be very well known. His name was Joe Satriani. Satriani was the first guy that really looked at it as a craft and with this diligence and discipline. I mean, it was through him that I, I learned, you know, there's, there's a balance between, you know, work and play. But all these trills reminded me of a clip I saw with Alex Skolnick back in the day with Testament, and he was doing trills, you know, during the solo. And there was lots of trill action in 80s thrash metal, for sure. And Satriani was teaching kind of the important thrash metal guitarists, you know, in the Bay Area back in the day. Members of Metallica, Exodus, Testament, for crying out loud. But here's uh, Alex's lick. <laughs> So he's basically doing neighbor tone trills along A5 or an A power chord. So he's doing G sharp and A right there and trilling. And then D sharp and E right here and trill. And then G sharp and A again. D sharp and E again. G sharp and A again. D sharp and E once again. And he starts doing that trill and tapping G sharp right there at the end. Something like that. So you can go real slow. And then once you get used to that lick, you can go faster. This is going to be interesting. So I'm going to take an idea that came from the Guitar Secrets book. This is the grouped articulations uh, lesson. I think it's around page 20. And in that lesson, Joe's taking a G major scale, but sequencing and arranging the notes on the fretboard in a very unusual way. So I'm going to show you that, you know, concept. But then I'm also going to show you a variation that I created from his idea. But it's my, you know, kind of variation or idea. And this is going to be a good example of taking something from a book and then turning it into your own idea or making your own variations. So, uh, you know, G major's right here, Ionian. And what Joe's doing is he's grabbing notes like this. So groups of three. And he's grabbing F sharp, A, and then G. And then move up and grab, you know, G, B to A. And then A, C, B. And then B, D, C. basically the same thing but lock into G major like this and then the D string and the G string and then the B and the high E and it's a really good sequence it's very unusual very demanding too and once again don't worry about shredding that it's kind of a physical challenge, like a workout. And I would just run through it like this. And right there, I'm not trying to break the sound barrier or anything. I'm just playing it with, you know, very precise and connecting and both of my hands are working together and acclimated, you know? And that's the important thing there, is getting your pick hand and your fret hand together. And you can definitely, you know, play it as fast as you want to, but the important thing there is control and, you know, playing everything accurate. Great sequence to work on for sure. Now here's my variation of that idea. So I'm taking A minor pentatonic right here. And there's the box or shape one you can call it. And then I'm also grabbing notes from the previous shape. I guess you can think of that as shape five. And this is also A minor pentatonic, but right here. And what I ended up doing is I saw the grouped articulation idea and I thought, well, what if we did that with pentatonics? So my idea or variation here is taking the movement that we saw in that grouped articulation lesson, but applying it to a pentatonic scale like this. It's very unusual. And you can descend. And it's very, you know, weird. 
It's definitely, you know, a big challenge for your fret hand because you're moving between, you know, two positions in minor pentatonic and you know, kind of weaving like that. <laughs> positions for sure definitely you know a great idea to kind of work on and it's really you know a challenge it's different unless you practice you know working on pentatonic scales like that that's going to be really hard for you to play but then once you kind of you know uh, jumped over that hurdle and it starts to feel a little bit easier then you're searching for that next technical challenge or you know sequence hurdle next up is a melodic d harmonic minor phrase from phil kettner who played with uh, last rocket back in the day nobody's talking about last rocket anymore but Phil definitely studied with Joe Satriani and leave it to me to find this lick and hone in on this harmonic minor tonality, which I'm a sucker for harmonic minor. But it's pretty simple, but I do like this phrase like this. <laughs> grabbing D and A and then skipping over to the B string right there with that E and F. So grab that E, F, E, and then D, C sharp right there, and there's your harmonic minor that raised seven. And you're just kind of moving between that E and F and that C sharp and G, and then eventually at the end slide that C sharp down to A like that. we're going to talk about Jeff Tyson and Jeff is a monster guitarist that very few people seem to remember or know but he played with a band called T-Ride in the early 90s and their self-titled debut in 92 is definitely an overlooked gem of an album it's very different and it doesn't sound like 80s hair metal it doesn't sound like 90s alternative either I don't really know how to describe it I guess there's a little bit of an extreme influence like with the vocal harmonies and some of the funky, you know, guitar riffs, but here's an image with the T-Ride album so you can find it. And then here's a clip of Jeff talking about working with Joe Satriani, you know, taking lessons from him. One time he said, um, all right, you're in a recording studio. Um, they're paying you a lot of money and uh, it's the mafia and they've, they've got your sister and they're gonna kill her unless you play something really, really good. And you have to do it in one take. Ready, here you go. And you have to play over this. And he'd start playing a progression. If you didn't do something perfectly, you know, your sister would lose an ear or she would, uh, you know, she'd get flushed down the toilet or something like that. And then for Jeff's lick, it's this terrifying stretch pentatonic idea. And I love these stretch pentatonic licks, but it's something like this. <laughs> tuning because it's noticeable at the end he's tuned much lower than standard tuning I'm still in standard so I don't know if he's tuned down a whole step or something I don't know what's going on but you can definitely hear at the end of that lick he hits a low C sharp and I'm just ending on the C sharp right there but uh, as far as the stretch pentatonic lick he's actually starting on the C sharp here and you're really just combining two positions of minor pentatonic string so there's c sharp b and that uh, g sharp and then you're reaching over there and grabbing that uh, e c sharp and that b right. and it's just descending you know sextuplets like that and try to make it sound like a video game or a computer you know freaking out like that and right there you're going to basically do it five times slow it down and then you actually hear him pick those notes and he starts moving down like C sharp blues right here and move back to that C sharp and that B G sharp low E and then you hear him 
dive his bar down and grabs that C sharp. Or whatever. All right, that's going to wrap this episode with the students of Joe Satriani. And definitely, I'm a huge Joe Satriani fan. I've been following him and his music since I was a kid, you know, a, a teenager or preteen. You know, in my bedroom, reading guitar magazines, listening to Surfing with the Alien and Flying the Blue Dream and some of this stuff. And hopelessly trying to play, you know, some of those legato licks and some of his music. And just chipped away at his music. And I became so obsessed with him once upon a time that, you know, when I would play a new song or a riff or something for somebody... And say, yeah, man, that sounds really good, but it sounds exactly like Joe Satriani. And that scared me, where I thought, well, I don't want to be a copycat. You know, I don't want to mimic Joe. I want to be myself. But I loved him that much, where his music started to kind of rub off on me, so to speak. And so I had to kind of back away. I had to, you know, distance myself from his music, and I started to explore some different, you know, players and styles and acoustic stuff and whatever. But whenever I go back to Joe Satriani, it's like I'm returning home. It's almost like listening or you know, revisiting Van Halen. It's that early kind of, you know, teenage, early guitar kind of blanket where it's like, yeah, this is, you know, my comfort zone or where, where I come from, you know. So anyway, leave some feedback and comments. Please subscribe to the Night Lessons and I'll be back before you know with more content and material. Thank you.